Hello, I'm the Budget Modeler, and this is episode two of my buddy build with my buddy, Mr. Marley. Hello, John, how you doing? You're on mute. I'm good, you know, Steph. Yourself? I am good, thank you very much. How's <laughs> Beginner here. Over? Um, cold, but otherwise, yeah, it's good, you know. Yeah, nothing to complain about. Yeah. How's life there? Uh, it is mad fiddling. Uh, the sun is out. There's only a few puffy clouds in the sky. And I have my first two perennial poppies have come out. Oh. Right. Here you go. I will show you. Let me just go on to I? my roaming camera. Oh. So you can see that's the hellhole that is a shed. It's an absolute uh, crap hole. It needs I'm sources. taking notes. I'm going to case your place. Yeah, that's my cricket machine. Hmm. Come on, cause it. <laughs> The man on the scene. Oh my God! Oh, come on! The white balance is shot. You can just see them. Yeah, I can. But... That's okay. Good enough. And you've got the peony there. And the wisteria oh, there about to come out. Anyway, there you go. That's a quick shot of uh, my back garden. It's huge. Lovely. That's great. My back garden cool. is about three times the size of my house. <laughs> I won't show you mine. It's all dark. Up, two up, two down. Mm. So there we go. The poppies are out. First two of about 30 odd we've got. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with those. That's yeah. going to be fun and interesting and all that malarkey. So let's go to John and find out where he is on his build. Right. Well, changing camera. Um, okay. So since we last did this, there hasn't been too much progress, but there's, you know, I'm happy with it. What we've done is pretty much finished the tub. Um, it's a bit hard to see. My camera does not focus at all. So what I'll do is, well, that's not bad. A bit of color there. Um, Finish the uh, rear seat combing and all that sort of stuff. I haven't painted the top of that. That'll be looking at photos. It's probably a German grey. It's not exactly black. It's not exactly grey. Would that be correct, Steph? Which is that? The, the top of the, the central combing in front of the nav. Yeah, they were all black. Okay, right. Uh, right, <clears throat> so that's about to go together. So what I'm going to do is um, not work on the tub at the moment I'll, I'll move on to other parts of the aircraft i think so you know i believe i'm going to be doing well, throwing the wings together but working on the, the central tub i think and under um the main wheel bays and all that sort of stuff like that so i'm just going mm -hmm. to be doing random stuff today what about yourself um i've where am i all right so if we click on that button there that button there. I've got all the features on the tub down. It's ready for spraying. Same as the pilot's console, the nav's console. All that lot is now ready for spraying. Um, the seats. If I show you how they came, they came with Ooh, the back pad. You just in. <laughs> yep, they came with the back pad bent over. And then when you put the straps in, they're laying the straps in the seat. The straps were never, ever laid in the seat. The straps were always placed outboard, and these were crossed over the head box. Also, where is it, if I can find it, this piece here, 
This has yeah. got that tube in. That tube was never, ever, ever fitted. Ever in a million years. And it was uh, metallic green, not flat black. There you go. So these are the hoses that come out of the head because you've got air conditioning that comes out of the head box there. These little bits were not flesh, they were orange. So that is what I'm going to be doing today. Mm -hmm. So I've already done this section here, this section here. Well, I haven't done it. I've cleaned all the parts up, got rid of them all. So I'm going to be probably going to be putting these parts in, uh, making this box and gluing it in. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing today and try and get some uh, spraying done. Or some, well, I say spraying, uh, more like uh, priming. Right. So let's put that wheels away. So there we go. And let's mm -hmm. crack on and get some work done. So uh, I'd like your opinion on something, Steph. Uh -oh. <clears throat> the, the pipes you're talking about for the aircon on the, um, yeah. the head boxes. Now, I the colour I've used is a, a German orange. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was going to ask, you, would it be more orange than that or, or whatever? But no, that's I about guess. right. And then It'll just do. put a wash on it, a black wash on sure. it. Sure, will do. Lovely. All right, I'll crack on. We'll get that out of the way. Can't be seen to be drinking on YouTube. What is interesting on this kit? Well, you got it on for having photo etch and all that sort of stuff like that. It does sort of increase a bit of the fun, but I don't understand why they would have it on, say, pylons. Uh, there, exactly where you're going to be attaching bombs or fuel tanks or whatever. Uh, uh, it just be, adds a bit of interest to it. Yeah, there's a bit of crutching pads and everything else, but it'll make it yeah. difficult to to stick anything on, and you won't see it. <laughs> Yeah, but you'll know. Oh, yes, that old chestnut. Cool. Well, I'm going to enjoy this build. It's a lovely plane. It is. All right. So. Oh, there you are, you little tinker. Trying to escape, were you? What was that? Uh, one of the aircon pipes. <laughs> yeah, mine did escape. N never seen again. All right. Got your theme music stuck in my head again. It's going to happen every time we do this. Good. <laughs> Not too shabby.
Hmm. Oh, come on. I know Paul won't be tuning in tonight. He's offered a comedy show with his partner. At a what? Oh, he's doing a show in Melbourne. I um, can't remember what he's saying, but it was on face tubes not long ago. Let me just look at that. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, seeing a show called Once at the Comedy Theatre. Okay, no cool. idea what that is. But he's back from Perth today, currently in Melbourne. Yep. <laughs> Righto. Let's get some stuff done. I would if this bloody super glue would stick. What super glue do you use? Uh, just bog standard cheap stuff. Mm Leave those to set properly. Alright, that's about ready for. So the seats are ready for a spray prime. Mm -hmm. So is the tub. Do you always prime everything? Yes. Yeah, I don't. I, I tend to prime external surfaces, just you know, the handling and everything else. I mean, inside stuff, I'm lazy. I just do the colour because it doesn't get handled. Yeah. No, the reason I prime it is because in case there's any release agents still on there. Oh, of course. Yeah. Thirty-six and thirty-seven. Uh, would you be planning to have your wings swinging, or are you going to stick them in, say, the uh, forward position? Or They're going to be forward. Yeah. Same. same. Uh, reason for that is, on the deck, they never ever had them swept. Would you have a problem with uh, fuel balance and stuff if they were swept on the ground and fully yep. loaded? Yeah. Yes. That was the reason why it was never swept when it was on the deck. Yeah, same with the F-111s that we had here, of course. Oh. If I just keep moving stuff around, I look industrious and I sound industrious. There may not be progress, but it sounds like there is. And that's what it's all about. Grand illusion. Ah, lovely. Um, 
see if there's a difference between the assembly instructions for the Edward kit and the Rebel instructions in regards yeah. to the intakes. Um, no, same, same. Can you remind me what your tip was in regards to the intakes? Like build them up first? Yep. Do as they're doing in the... Destructions? Destructions. Right-ho. Like a bull in a pig in China shop. Yeah. I've worked with people like that. Yeah, so I was mentioning before we went on air step, my local club, the Hunter and, oh no, it's a Newcastle and Hunter Scale Modelling Society, which is um, Newcastle, Australia, um, uh, has a, a group build. One of the guys had just said, hey, how about building E model, uh, B509 E's, like you know, any scale, any brand. Um, we've got a couple of months, go for it. And I'm thinking, oh, well, you know, I've done one recently. Oh, you know, but there's something about the, I mean, there's so many, so much variety with, with the schemes and everything else. You're never not going to enjoy, enjoy it, I think. Mm. And Edward have just recently, I don't know if it's new, I think it was last year, uh, bought out a kit with um, four schemes that I really like. And it's calling out to me um, just because, the possibilities are like get if I build one of them, I'm going to have decals for or decals for um, the other ones later on. And I think cool. I might, oh, I think I might do that. I've been trying to talk myself out of it. My brother would just go, no, no. But he was also I was sending him the photos, and he was in Perth in this hotel room, just going, oh, so we'll see. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Oh, tell you what, I'll I'll show you the schemes that are in the kit just because I got them handy. So I'll change my camera to me. Uh, you'd know these schemes because they're pretty famous. Uh, there we go. Paul Marley, Marley, there he is. Right. Okay. So that's the kit. There we are. Mm -hmm. uh, that one there. Give me a sec. All right, yep. Okay, so the schemes are uh, that one there with the Chamberlain on the on the on the, on the back there. Uh, yep. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember his name. Helmut Vick, which is always a always a good scheme. Um, two number th it's a forty eight scale version of the current Airfix uh, P five hundred nine, which is cool. Yep. Uh, um, uh, Von Vera, Von Vera, the one that said Cosford apparently, uh, and Adolf Galland. So it's a pretty good choice. Like this, yeah, it's a, the um, Profi Pack. So there's five schemes in there. Mm -hmm. and, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. Because the last one I built was um, Joseph Prillers. Oh. Uh, and that came out rather well. I mean, I'm thinking about doing one. I don't have to. You know what it's like? It's like doing these um, group builds with mates of yours because they ask you. And you sort of think, well, I could just build what I want. But maybe what I want to build is what they're asking me to build. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it, it was sorry. the reason I did this one. 
because you wanted to or because yeah, I was doing it? meaning to do it for ages and ages and ages and ages. Well, as long as I didn't force you into it. No, you, you asked me. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's always a bonus. The other kit that's calling out to me is a bit more expensive, double the price. It's a, well, more than double the price. It's a 48 scale HK models B25J Mitchell uh, glass oh, nose. Yeah. Um, that looking at, there's a video of a guy going through the kit. You know, it's not an unboxing. It's actually a really good one. In fact, I'll forward to you after this. Um, and he talks about the fit of every part to every part. And yeah, all of it is saying wonderful, fantastic, you know, perfect. And I'm just, they're good words to hear when you're discussing kits. But the fact is, I've got the 48 scale HK Lancaster, and I should be building that before I do a Mitchell, even though the Mitchell's going to be so much smaller. So there we go. Decision made. The next kit off my, after I finish this one, the Lightning and the Renault RE30B Turbo Formula One car will be an HK Lancaster. Cool. This is like therapy, talking to you. <laughs> okay, why? Well, because it's like, you know, just it's like an inner monologue. Like, I don't want dead air, if that makes sense. Right, I mean, dead air is dead air, mate. You, you don't have to talk. Hmm. Yeah, we are doing this. We're making models, and we have to concentrate at times. And concentrate we do. So if you want just... me to shut up, tell me. Oh, if I want you to shut up, mate, I will tell you to shut up. Yeah, good, good. Don't worry about that. All righty. These parts are everywhere in these sprues, aren't they? Mm -hmm. There we are. Hmm. Yep. Mark's in. Hello, Mark. How you doing? Mr. Hello, Mark. Take it, it's your lunch hour, my old. Really makes me giggle because I'm looking at the PE sheet. Mm -hmm. oh, I've done it again. I've left you up. Sorry. No, that's my mistake. Uh, oh, no. Just looking at the PE sheet here, and if I you see the straps there. Yes. Now that to me looks pink. They were never pink. They were beige. Beige, yeah. Standard straps. Yeah. So where they got bloody pink from, I do really pink. don't know. Um. Yeah, I'm going to leave mine. I. I don't hate it. Yeah. Like the fact is, I can be pedantic about everything, but none of it matters. <laughs> Yeah, um, when it comes to stuff I know, I'm terrible. Yes, exactly. That's why I haven't built a Hercules kit. Or an F-35. Oh, no, oh, you built an F-35, okay. Yeah, it put me to sleep. It was a Meng one, wasn't the uh, Tamiya one. Uh, but I, I'm not. I have got no 
desire to build the, the Tamiya one anytime soon. I just I have a love hate relationship with that aircraft. Well, you love to hate it. Well, you know, every other aircraft is easier to work on. It's got some wonderful things about it, but you know, most of it you can't talk about. Well, the fact that if it uses the arrestor hook once, that's the aircraft buggered. Uh, for an A model, yes. And the fact that women can't fly it because the helmet's too heavy for them. Uh, not a thing. No, we, we have female pilots. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the helmet is lighter than the... Our, um, yeah, we had a Jahamix joint helmet mounted queuing system in the classic Hornet, the A and B model. Um, it was because it was an add-on. There's a standard helmet with lead weights at the back to supplement the you know, all the, the gear at the front. That was heavier. This one being composite and all that stuff is lighter, but um, yeah, like I haven't I haven't heard a talk of uh, females not being able to deal with that. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you what. One thing that surprised me when I got to Fighter World, uh, most most of my career was in places other than fighters, and you know all of our pilots were down to earth. All of this, like, actually, I've got to admit, some of our Orion crews, the rear seaters, some of them were much more arrogant than um, the people sitting up the front. Yeah, the pro um, bags. Yeah, but um, yeah, when I got to Fighter World, I would have thought they were, would be really sort of up themselves and you know self-serving. Oh no, no, we serve them and everything else, and you know. Completely the, the opposite. Yeah, but our, ours, ours were really, really a good bunch of guys. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you get the odd ass, but most of our jockeys and navs were hmm. decent people. And we'd have exchange guys from the UK, from the US, and they were wonderful as well because if everything for them was just, oh, they're so good down here. Like, um, you know, because we're laid back to a certain point, so things that yep. would people would be really sort of anal about, we we sort of let fly, but not to the point. You know, you, you pick your you pick your fight. You know what I mean? Yep. The things not that the matter, and you do dangerous. that properly. Yes, yes. That was a good career. I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I'm the same now, as you, mate. I'm glad I'm not doing it anymore. I miss it. Don't get me wrong. Do you mind if I talk for a yeah. minute and explain what, uh, why I'm here and how we know each other and stuff? Yes, I do mind. Okay. Well, you gave me the opportunity to say no. I'm not talking to you anymore. Me, 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 me. <laughs> On then, fully boots. Don't worry. Oh, good lord. <laughs> okay, I'll keep it brief. <laughs> good luck with that one. All right, so, um, for the, the wider viewing audience, people who have never heard of you know this Aussie accent didn't, didn't know who it was. You can tell by the face, I'm not huge. Uh, actor or Hugh Jackman. I'm just a very ordinary Aussie. Recently, um, Royal Australian Air Force was uh, an avionics technician for about 20, 27 and a half years. Um, and a couple of years ago, um, I heard about this wonderful charity in the UK called Models for Heroes that Steph is um, a volunteer for. And um, I got in touch with them to say, hey, tell me more. I'd like to, I think, you know, I'd like to sort of help where I can set one up here in Australia because I think it would be very much, I mean, I love the hobby. And very soon after that, within a matter of two months, um, I went from being fully uh, deployable and useful and everything else to being the, you know, that guy, like the one that just, you know, 
not walking with purpose and all that sort of stuff. Basically, what happened is my, um, I had terrible sciatic pain and had trouble doing anything, walking, sitting, standing, you know, sciatica is awful. Um, went to medical, all that sort of stuff like that. MRI, everything. Went to a neurosurgeon and what he said is like, you know, yeah, you're too far gone for keyhole surgery or anything else. All I can offer you is um, spinal fusion. Um, so about six months later, I had a spinal fusion operation and the recovery from that is long and uh, drawn out. And um, I was doing half days if, you know, if not, you know, two or three, it started, you know, it started having weeks off and then getting back to work. But then I was suddenly part of the out crowd and was not welcome. And my, my boss is pretty much, yeah, we'll, we'll look after you to a point, but, you know, you're not performing and you're not deploying, so you're not performing, but we're not going to deploy you because you're not performing and you're not performing because you're not deploying and just going around in circles. So basically that's it. Given the, the uh, <laughs> you know, what, what they said is like, is there a way you can't be here anymore? And this is round about the time that um, Steph and I was starting to chat because I got onto Models for Heroes and started dro dropping in on the Models for Heroes sessions that, that they run um, well, three times a week, but one is a public one. And I was really enjoying that because I was going through a really tough period of my life. Hey? And these guys were a wonderful support and uh, a good bunch of guys and you know people with similar interests and all that yes i don't have to tell you about that but i've never really changed i want to uh do what i can to help people in australia go through you know f find modeling as a, a therapy and a like a, a, something positive in their lives to be able to you know carry on <laughs> and realize that you know there's a point where you have to just accept that you're going to have to stop and do something else. And, um, yeah, like I, I had a, it was a really tough time and I've come out the other end and I want to be a help to people rather than sit back and complain. So looking at uh, Models for Heroes in Australia, I obviously cannot call it Models for Heroes. It's, you know, um, registered charity in the UK and everything else they have a video and one of their old bylines used to be piece by piece is in what's at the bottom of my screen there and I asked Malcolm Childs do you mind if I use that as a just a, a start up and he said absolutely fill your boots you know it's yours so that's my aim is uh, doing that <laughs> so I'm looking forward to actually running a session i've been asked there's a couple of questions lately from um uh, we have an organization here called soldier on and i'm in touch with them about like you know hey i'd like to do this is that okay and they're very happy to do that but they've asked me a couple of questions and i haven't in the last couple of well in the last couple of days i haven't felt <laughs> able to answer properly I've, I've been feeling quite miserable actually just with um, you know something going on medically with me and um, yeah, I'll get around to that very shortly. But things are looking positive here. Uh, th this hobby has introduced me to a lot of wonderful people around the globe. And um, I love being part of this community. And I'd like to develop it a little bit more. Cool. How's that? What if I stop there? Yeah, stop there if you want to. Right, if you, feel f you need to carry on, please feel free to. You, just because... Oh, one sec. Ah... Uh... I've left me up there again. Couple uh, comments. Uh, Mark says, uh, "Great, thanks." No, not yet. Just noticed you were streaming. Yep, Tuesdays <sighs> and Fridays at the moment. Um, I won't put any many uh, videos out at the moment. Uh, getting married in a couple of months, so. <sighs> uh, Mark also goes on to say, "Wondered why I could only see John." He mm. and he went arsh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the guys in the UK at, at Models for Heroes, Steph and um, the, other, the other guys, um, have been a wonderful support for me. And like we, we've we've interacted quite a bit over the last couple of years. And I feel, you know, when you have mates that you've never met, it's like that very much. Well, that's certainly the way I feel. Speak for yourself, Steph. 
Fucking swear at me, you bastard. <laughs> Bit presumptuous calling me your mate. <laughs> I know you're a gunny. How am I going to deal with that? No, I was never a gunnery sergeant. Now we call armourers gunnies here, even though they do more than guns. Oh, yeah, we did more than guns. Um, we did the whole bloody kit and caboodle, including small arms. Yeah, we're pretty much the same, I and mean, we've got the same. We started under your uh, your model, I guess. And yeah, everything the same. We have slightly different names for things, but it's pretty much mirror. It's like uh, Canada, New Zealand, yeah. South Africa. Fuck's sake! I hate doing small pig in pieces. No, oh, you love it. No, they get stuck all over the pigging shop. Bum, bum, bum. Now, let's try this again. Okay, so there's the pedals in. Oh. Well, there you go. If I put this the other way, it fits right there. Who knew? P forty five. Where are we? Number forty five. Oh dear. How are you getting on, John? It's all good. Uh, I mean, there's nothing that I've come across yet which which has sort of angered me, baffled me, flummoxed me. Any other words you want to use? Mm -hmm. It's all right. I think what I will do though, I'll leave. I'm going to do the inner. Um, I'd imagine. The ducting that's in the intakes is movable. Yes. Right. Yeah, but again, as usual, we'll... only when in flight. Yeah. Well, Hornets just have a series of, you know, we've got boundary uh, fences just before the intakes. And there's four lines of um, vertical strips just before the intake. And they're perforated and they have mm -hmm. um, a vacuum different pressures it, it, you know, two of them are the same and two are separate and yeah basically the fence removes a boundary layer before it goes into the intake but then the boundary fence itself causes a boundary layer so then you've got the four layers of vacuum that suck that away so everything going into the duct is uh you know undisturbed and you know, no no vortices or anything else so yeah our, yeah. our intakes are very different And here's a fun fact about the F-35. There's no part of the F-35 intake ducts that are movable. Um, but it's so well engineered. In fact, in the publications, it says that the intakes are one of the major successes of the F-35 program. And for that to be in the publication, they must be very proud of that. Um, that at all speeds, all uh, angles of attack and everything else, that uh, the, the shape of it not only uh, doesn't you know, send a reply or anything visible on radar, but it uh, doesn't stifle the engine in any way at all. So that's pretty cool. cool. 
bet you didn't know that. That's not on the internet until now. Hmm. I don't think Lockheed would be upset if I told them that because they're very proud of it. Well, from what I've heard, it's still not fit for night flights. Uh, incorrect. Okay, it's it's now been signed off, has it? Well, different countries, we do our things independently of you. Now, r remember that you've got B models, we've got A models. But no, half the flying we do is at night. Cool. Initially, it wasn't signed off for flying uh, if there's any cloud in the sky. In fact, they came down from an air show. They came over from Luke Air Force Base in America to an air show in Melbourne a number of years ago, but in 2000 and I'm trying to remember now, it would have been about 2017, I think. And mm -hmm. it was a bit of a bugger. They flew halfway around the world for an air show and then they couldn't fly because there was a storm in Ambly about 2,000 kilometres away. <laughs> Quite embarrassing that they have a plane called a Lightning that couldn't fly if there's lightning anywhere on the radar. But all that has been sorted as well. But it wasn't good for PR because everybody, like thousands of people paid hundreds of dollars to see this thing fly and they were all disappointed. But yeah. it, it's moved on since then. So we, I've seen them. <laughs> we, we launch them during rain. We launch them when it's hot and humid and everything else. And it just, you know, it just keeps going, really. Yep. Well, Tom Bill's mobile is in. He says, oh. evening, boys. I have a question for you. Uh, you uh, subscribe to me. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I've hit 900. Oh, wonderful. So thank you very much. Um, what I wanted to ask, Pom Built Modeling. Is you what were you watch, thinking? He watches... Um, AFC Rushton. Can I ask you a question now? Why? Why are you subscribed to AFC Rushton? So he's obviously a member of the club that I'm a part of, but I cannot pick him because I don't call anyone in the club Pom Built. Well, obviously, <laughs> he's originally a Pom. Yeah. So, hence the Australian flag and the England flag. Mm. So, yeah. Every time I'm out doing this, my kids are always cracking up laughing. They must be talking about me. Yeah, probably about how you go on about things. Pick it out. All right, I'm going to have a bit of a Google look for um, all the intake ducts. So I can ask Steph, but uh, uh, well, basically, I'll Mark Broadwith says, Well done, thank you very much, Mark. Just wondering whether he's still listening. One. So what what does the GR stand for? Is Ground reconnaissance. Ground reconnaissance. There you go. Mm -hmm. I just never knew. Yeah, GR one. GR one was uh, uh, the GR one A was uh, ground reconnaissance. Uh, that was what uh, two squadron flew. They did all the recce pictures and stuff like that. Right. Hmm. Oh, I see. 
You're right. Intake ducts, barley grey. What have I got here? Now, Steph, here's a question for you. Yep. This is a picture of the interwebs. This is most likely a GR4 or something, but similar. Would you say if the intakes were grey on, on a green and uh, grey GR1, that the colour would be the same as that? Yep. That's a German one. Ah, oh, it's a German one. So that's, you'd no, say... Same colour. Yeah, so it'll, it'll have a black around the... Yes. The, um, okay. Nice to know. Oh, there we go. Uh, and Mark says, I, I am. Remind me what that was too. Uh, Pombert Modelling. I love my non-league football. He used to enjoy watching Rushton and Diamonds many years ago until they sadly folded. Then found out that AFC Rushton started and followed. Yes, I'm English. And you'll never believe this. I'm about what about six hundred yards from the new AFC Rushton ground in Rushton. There you go. So, yeah, that's what piqued my interest. So that's why I asked. And this has been in Australia nearly twenty years. So, yes, I do like my non. Well, I used to like my non-league football. Until my team went up from non-league last year. And that was Grimsby, not Wrexham. Originally from Grimsby, hence the reason I follow them. Yeah. Right, what am I doing? Number 50. Um, you'll need to excuse me, step. I'm going to step away for a couple of minutes. I'll be back. Yep, not a problem. So bloody small. And I do have a wax pen somewhere and I can't remember where the hell it's gone. Well, that one, oh, oh no. You are, ah, little tinker. Got it. Little thing. Ah. 
Ah, you're originally from Kent, are you, Pombo? Cool. Ah, I tell you what, I wish I'd have moved out to Australia years ago. But hey ho, hindsight is uh, brilliant. But then, if I did, I wouldn't be with the woman I'm with at the moment, and I'm really happy with that. Right, so I need to clean this up. Yep, oh, he's back. Better stop talking about him now. Bit of blue tack on there. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I'm sure right. Welcome back. Oh, so my son just had a bit of a dummy spit. I don't know if it's in the news um, about the uh, what the Chinese are doing in the South China Sea here. Oh, good Lord. Are they playing silly sods again? Well, what they're doing is uh, salvaging the, uh, well... The wrecks of the, um, I think it's a repulse and the Prince of Wales. They're doing what? That's maritime law, that is. That's Well, it's China. They're, <laughs> they're breaking maritime law. They're pilfering and plundering war graves. Yeah. That's exactly what they're doing. That's disgusting. So this is, um, just to read out the story. Yeah, my son just came out and he said, are you live? And I said, yes. And he said, and he, and he was full on swearing and everything else. Yeah. A Chinese oh, salvage ship has been caught red-handed. Oh, he's 25. Been caught red-handed looting the war graves of 840 men, ripping up the World War II wrecks of the battleship HMS Prince of Wales and the battle cruiser HMS Repulse for high-quality steel. Uncovering live ammunition, two British 5.25-inch anti-aircraft cannon, a ship's anchor, section of the, the hull, blah, 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 blah. And it goes on. Yeah. <laughs> China. Arseholes. Yes. So, you know, we're not political here, but, yeah, that's uncool. That's not political. I'm sorry, that is not political. That is just downright disgusting. All right. Double-sided tip. Okay. Now the sound inside the house has changed. It sounds like my other two daughters are watching a Barbie movie. <laughs> so they're probably going to be singing in a minute. All right. Here we go.
Yeah, you know, the thing about where these wrecks are is it's in Malaysian waters, but of course, because China are claiming all of the South China Sea, they're saying it has a, it, it, their name on it. Yeah, um, there's nothing I could do about it, and you can understand it's just like Ukraine and everything else happening over there. But you could say all you want, but we're not. We'd be mad if we went and did anything in retaliation because nobody wants nuclear annihilation, which is exactly what he threatened. Yeah. It's very crap. <laughs> very crap indeed. Unfortunately, most people on the planet don't necessarily agree with their governments. No, that's the problem. Always good to have around. Mm. Double-sided sticky tape. Oh, yes? Why? I'll look up and see what you're doing. Right, I'll go full screen so you can see. Right, what I've got is three lolly sticks. Yeah. And I've laid them down on a strip of double-sided sticky tape. And then go one and Two cuts. No, nope, that's not got through, so we'll go this side. One. Two. So we've got them like that. So mm. push them down hard. And then peel off the backing. Wrap it round, and then we go squidge, 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 gentle squidge, 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 don't need the blue tack on there, squidge. Make sure there's a decent gap between them all. Mm -hmm. And then they're ready for priming. It's a good tip. Especially when you've got lots of small little pieces. So, yeah, so you were able to not lose one of your aircon ducts, is that correct? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you haven't got an extra one. I, I haven't found mine. Whether it's over with you, I, I just don't know. Could be. It's probably the same place my uh, shoulder, put not my shoulder pylon, my rudder went. Oh, yeah. The latest comment there from Pom Built Modeling. Yes, I've seen it. It's originally from Kent. Originally from Kent. Yes, I read that out earlier. Oh, sorry, I was not here. That is a beautiful part of the world. My father went to school in Kent, well, uh, Duke of York, Royal Military School. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, he was brought into the office one day to say, oh, you're leaving. You're going to um, Australia with your parents for £10. That was 1952. Did you know about it? Not until that day, no. Uh -huh. So this is the thing, this, the story goes, my grandfather, Clifford Marley, um, was a cook in the um, uh, 1st Worcestershire Regiment and served in uh, India and a couple other places. In fact, he was there for many years. And then um, for Singapore, the British Army were pulled out of India very quickly. Yeah. Um, and they were sent to a nicer place called Palestine. So he was there from 1942, I think, until about, I think, 1949, when he left the British Army and he went back to Cardiff, where they were from. And, um, you know, 
times would have been tough because, you know, post-war austerity and all that stuff like that. He walked into the council. This is what my father tells me. He walked into the council office and said, I'd like a council house, please. And they said, well, no, there's no evidence of you paying rates for the last, say, 20 years or so. And he said, yeah, I've been off you know, fighting wars to give you people, people like you jobs and all that sort of stuff like that. And I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm a bureaucrat. So he left the council office in Cardiff, got on a train, went to London, went to Australia House and sorted that out. Then went home and said to his wife, Mary, we're going to Australia, tell the boys. <laughs> so here's the thing I said, like, you know, did he, because, yeah, obviously he died in 1974, I was five. You don't ask questions, do you? You don't know. Um, but I asked, oh, did they ever regret moving to Australia? And the answer is no, absolutely not. But everything here was um, more opportunity. And, um, you know, nicer weather and everything else. Obviously, missed family, as you would. Yeah. But what's cool is I'm still in touch with uh, our family over in Cardiff now. Oh, nice. And I'll be visiting them in November. Want to go cool. over for Telford? Because my twin brother hasn't met them yet. No. This is, every, every part of marrying up on this so far has been somewhat satisfying. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Hmm. This is, I, I can't remember the last Revel kit I built. It would have been um, late 80s, I would imagine. I don't even know what it was. The one that sticks in my mind was a, um, a big German fire truck. But I don't think, you know, I haven't avoided them. It's just I've just built other things. So this gives me confidence that I could do other ones. So my dad, I mean, they originally landed in Perth when they moved to Australia. Uh, and then about maybe, I think it was six months later, jumped on a ship, came across to Melbourne and um, moved to the, well, he just around different places in Melbourne. And the, yeah, my dad's other brother, he was 84, I think 84, the other day. Um, and stuff. And same deal. Like, no, they... Both sound as Australian as I do. Like, to quote Dad, it, it, it was beaten out of me in school in Perth, but I don't know how true that is. I think what he wanted to do was just meld in, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Because Perth, even today, has a very high uh, expat British uh, community and uh, population. I wouldn't say you were hated at the time because we, in our sort of like racist tendencies, would have hated anyone who wasn't uh, English-speaking, <laughs> German, Italian, wherever. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, he, he sounds as Australian as I do. He's a wonderful man. He's still with us. Cool. Taught me a lot. Oh, very close knit family, us Marlies. It's wonderful. Lovely. I'm not bothering in step J and K on page four. I'll flip this around if you if you don't mind sort of sharing the screen. Oh, I've done it again. It's all about you. It's all right. So in the instructions, there's a couple of pages there in the middle where they're talking about uh, putting the pylons on the wings. And they have a little C-clip that goes into the top of the center pylon so you can rotate the pylons as the wings sweep. I have no intention of having the sweep, uh, sweepable wings. Yeah. So I'm not bothering with the C-clips. I'll just glue them in. Um, I'll just basically wait till the wings are in place and then line the pylons up uh, forward and yeah. glue them. But um, as a result, yeah, none of that. I've just basically glued the, the wings together. 
but you know there is no gap anywhere around it um it's a very nice fit so cool. yeah so far if you want to buy a tornado kit um I, i'm not saying avoid <laughs> keep tuning in and subscribe hit the like button how am i doing steph yep hmm. thing is though with this with my channel i'm not about subscribers I know. i'm not about making this my livelihood this is my cathartic experience this is all about me finishing models uh, i procrastinate something rotten I am terrible for it. Mm. And this helps me to actually finish models and do them and all the rest of it. So it's like when people come on my channel and make a comment like, oh, why don't you slow down so I can see what you're doing, yada, yada, yada. My response is, I understand what you're saying. I get it. But what you've got to get is the fact that this is my channel. And I show it how I want to show it. I'm not in it for the for the kudos. Don't get me wrong. When you get recognised and somebody says, "I know your voice," hmm. I where do I know your voice from? And I say, "Well, if I say, should Prison. we crank up the speedy uppy thing?" And they go, <laughs> oh, "Go off YouTube." Yeah, it does give you a nice buzz. Yeah. Well, I remember saying, like, you know, when we were starting to get to know each other, you flicked up a couple of photos of things you built. And we go, oh, was that you? Because <laughs> you know, it's stuff I'd watched in the past. And, um, yeah, I had no idea. It's all very good. Yeah. It all, like, all of it, uh, as you say, like, it's not, um, like, I, if you go to my page on Facebook, on YouTube, I have uploaded absolutely zero videos. Um, I may sometime in the future, but at the moment, I, I'm not really interested in that. My focus is, um, I mean, maybe, maybe I will, but you know, once I uh, got all this set up and the camera and everything else, but I want to spend my energy in other places. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is perfectly understandable. But there's a, yeah, I follow, most of the things I follow are modeling pages, and there's a lot of really good people out there just down to earth. And you'd think you'd just get on and have a, have a good old time if you met them. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I'm going to jump around again. So the, the next thing I'm going to do, I was going to paint the interior of these inlet ducts, but because I don't have the right color or, or a color that I'm happy with going through, and I could mix one up, but I'm not particularly thrilled about any of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. I'll go off and buy some paint tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll yeah. paint something else. So what I'll do is the interior of the wheel wells, the landing gear struts, the, the wheels themselves, anything that's just white. Yeah. Um, two schools of thought I don't care you know people paint different things in different ways or whatever um, what, what, I, what I tend to do is uh, you know I, I don't think anyone follows instructions to a letter what I tend to do is paint things because you could either paint the interior of undercarriage uh, wheel wells and everything last um, because if you uh, if you can't see it, paint won't get in there and it won't matter. Or you can do it first. Either way, I tend to do it first and then touch up later if I need to. You know. Yeah. This is. I'm not doing air brakes up either. That would be a thing. They wouldn't ne necessarily be open on the ground, would they? Oh no. Only during your landing phase? Yep. Again, no real air brakes on a Hornet. Classic Hornet. They tend to just flick the two rudders inwards. Uh, and that'll do.
Yeah. This is cool. 69, 66. <laughs> I'm just looking around for all the bits. I hear Barbie's going off in the next room. That's nice. Yeah. Lots of fun for you. Right, got a couple of comments there. Uh, so Dominique's in the house. Morning, hey. Stephen John. Good afternoon, Dominique. Hope you're doing Hello, well. Dominique. How's life? How's life there in Tulip Land? Our oh, friendly cloggy. And Spro and Glue's in. Hi, Steph. John. Hello, Spro and Glue. How you doing, mate? Excellent. <sighs> Have you ever seen um, Monty Python, the Holy Grail? Oh, of course. Like, it's required viewing. You ready for this? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Terry Gilliam, hey? Uh Patsy, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who played Patsy. But yes. Uh I've got to get it primed and zenithold and then Lise is gonna paint it. <laughs> Allegedly, she keeps threatening she's going to paint stuff. Never does. Hmm. This is my second one of these um, Amazon things. They're very good. I like them. However, both of them have snapped uh, at this point here, halfway along. Oh, like, because when you put uh, them on, you tend to stretch them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Talking to the twin brother Paul the other day, yeah, he put them on the other day and they just fell off his head, snapped in the same <laughs> spot. Mine's, mine's got a crack. So a bit of glue there. It won't work. I'll have to buy another pair. But they're, they're cheap at 30 Australian dollars. <laughs> Delicious. Where are we? If you put up with the my creaking chair for a moment, I'm looking for uh, my my white. Sorry, I'm looking for my white paint. Oh, your white! I thought you said your wife for a minute. I thought. Oh, I know where she stuff. is. There we go. How much is in that? It feels empty. Enough. No <sighs> the pressure down. <laughs> Oh, it's quarter past nine already, local time.
Alrighty. Right, so what have you guys that are watching got on your benches? Let us know in the comments. Ooh. So I remember the last time we did this step, I remember saying, you know, I need to just stop being so tight and go and buy some new blades. So here we are a couple of days later, I'm thinking the same thought. <laughs> Go and buy some new blades. Hey, thank God. That's why you're here. Yeah. You're not related to the Scots, are you? Uh, yeah, I guess I am. Oh, Mother's yeah, maiden name was Hamilton. There you go then. So you got anything planned for the weekend? Um, it's my my wife's birthday on Sunday. All right, cool. I'm thinking Sorry. about going up to. There's a place just in inland for us called uh, Pabolkan. There's a place where they have a yeah an escape the room thing. But it's a winery, so it's escape the room with wine. Oh, nice. Sounds like it's a winner. <laughs> so I'm oh, thinking yeah. about doing that. Cool. But her sisters will want to come up for, from Sydney for that, so it may not be this weekend. Uh, so we won't see you Sunday morning then? Uh, no, we. Sh I think we will, because I think it'll be another time. My, my wife, she's wonderful. Love her to death. Hey, what do you want for your birthday? Oh, nothing. There's nothing I want. I just want the love of my children and family. No, what do you want? Because <laughs> I'm always buying stuff for me, like this sort of thing. Um, but you know, she never, like, you know, oh, well, I'm out of ideas. If you don't tell me what you want, I'll buy you a, an I, what do they call it, an Apple Watch. I don't want an Apple Watch. Well, tell me what you want. Oh, I don't want anything. All right. So if you say nothing, you'll get nothing. <laughs> you know, I've bought her a lot of things over the years and they're still in their wrapping, <laughs> just put aside. So I'm reluctant to do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's her birthday, so I should at least take her out to dinner. She, she's, she's wonderful. I know that feeling. I have a wonderful woman as well. And that is one of the best things in the world, especially when they get you. Because well, not being rude, I don't know other people, but some of the women I've been with mm -hmm. and I've had long-term relationships with just don't get you. They really, really don't get you. They don't understand you. What I guess is cool is like when I was in Melbourne last week. Uh, I spent a week in Melbourne with my, my, my family's from Melbourne. So I went down there to see my mum and dad and spend time down there and to see a concert and stuff. When I was there, I was staying at my twin brother's house and he said, um, I think um, part of what your relationship with Bronwyn is based on is uh, who can make each other laugh the most. And that's pretty cool, really. Like it's not necessarily true, but um, for him to mention it, like we, we 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 laugh a lot, and yeah, life's life's good. She she's very good. Mm. 
just you know, if she just told me what she bloody wants because I want to look after her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a bowling ball. I don't bowl. Oh, I do. Buy her a new cooker. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah. And when she says, what have you bought me a new cooker for? Well, you didn't give me ideas. Mm. I asked you what you wanted. You said, I don't want anything. So I thought I'd buy you something practical. Yeah. I think the closest we've come to uh, the ending of our relationship is when I bought her a, a knife sharpener. <laughs> something else. That's my other thing. Jesus. Uh, I'm not surprised buying her that. Well, you know, we needed one. <laughs> we still use it. Mm. But I, I think she uses it when I'm not around and she puts it back straight away. So <laughs> just to prove a point. What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, I'm really lucky because Lise does a lot of modelling. Oh, yeah. So I just buy the most recent thing she likes. She likes... Those kinetic ones, you know, the ones that move? Yeah. There you go. Buy one of those. Well, I had bought her a, one of those book nook things. Yeah. Still in the wrapper. Are you joking? Oh, my. Right, I'm afraid I have to go and pay a visit. I don't want to be sat here in the warm way. <laughs> or cold. Not good feeling. Sure, sure. Now, thank God that he's gone. Let's talk about him. So, what do you think of Steph? Hmm, dead silence. That's what I thought. Oh, God. There's really not that much for this, but the undercarriage is probably the smallest parts in the whole kit. You know, it's what you get with a 70 second scale kit. Tell you what, this is making me want to build a 48 scale version of one of these. Oh no, there it is. And listen to the bird life in England is again very different to here. I think it's called a woodland pigeon, is what you hear occasionally there. All I know it is the start of a Kate Bush album called Ariel. Yeah, that one. Oh no. Ah. So you probably can't see it. This is one of those, it's a ceramic scraper. This is an SMS one. It's uh, zirconia. Apparently it's, uh, what they're saying is if you use a knife blade to get rid of the seam line, It'll jump across as you as you're scraping. It'll sort of jump up and down and just indent these. These apparently don't, and they just um, stay flush. Well, whatever they say, I, I, I find they work very well indeed. <laughs> um, you giggling at yourself? I am. I've been talking about you. Ah, all bad. I hope. <laughs> all right, I'm just going to go and prime these. Yeah. So Steph is telling me one of the main reasons he does this is to 
make him build. He, you know, as you're saying earlier, he's a procrastinator. What I'm finding is this is making me build as well. I haven't been feeling too good the last couple of days. Like I've got something going on with my gut and um, I haven't spent too much time on the bench, but I am enjoying this. This is cool. Yeah. All right, there we go. Primed. Oh, oh you just use an aerosol primer, do you? I always use a rattle can. Okay. Because I do can't be brand? asked to... Um, I use this stuff. Okay. Cool. Color Forge. It is brilliant stuff. It's probably okay. the best primer out there. Um, and if you can't I've get, never seen get this, I use um, clay coat. Okay. The Tamiya stuff is very good. It's expensive. Allegedly, but it's as you say, it's expensive. Hmm. Oh, poo. I'm not forget to do. Back in a sec. Okay. Oh, crap. Where did that go? Ping! <laughs> yeah, but, you know, unlike you, I can't play it back and find out where it went. I'll tell you what. I'll get my, my FOD torch out and look for it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Hey, there we are. Did you find it? I did. Woohoo! Alright, let's pop that there to dry. Right, I'm going to do the bloody air intakes. There we go. Three. Yeah, um, I've just done the... Yeah, I haven't glued the inner face to the outer face, but I've just got the, um, I'll keep them separate. I've got the, the baffle in there, but I'll keep yeah. them separate until I paint them and then touch them up later as required. 65, 64. Yeah. So, Steph, yes, what John. Part, what up that part I just found? Sorry, that part I was missing and just found. Where did I put it? I don't know. Where did you put it? Ah, oh, bloody hell! Who know how it help? Oh, there it is. Thank you. Have you seen how poor the surface detail is on the top? Oh yeah. That's gonna need rescribing. Yeah, it's um seems to be terribly sunken as well. Yep. That may need a thick bit of styrene under there just to straighten it back out. We shall see. 
That's just absolutely pig and horrendous. Either that or a bit on top. The best way to see how flat or sticking up something is. Mm -hmm. To get something like a marker and then just draw on it like that. Yep. Remembering to stick the lid back on. <laughs> Blow on a bit to get it to dry and then just. Got a flat file. Where's my flat, proper flat file? Got a flat file, and then just look, and that shows you exactly where the high and low spots are. Must be cold here. That Posca yes. paint pin hasn't dried either. It's just mad. Because look, even that doesn't pig and fit. Pop that there. Oh, come on. There's a dry fit before I did the other bit. Oh, he's going to go out the door in a sec. <laughs> All right, you fit now, you twatting thing. Doesn't seem too bad. It's coming off fairly evenly for me. Yeah. For me, it's just the lack of how much detail. Surface detail, detail. yes. So that's going to be a lot of uh, Dymo tape. <sighs> oh, I just need to stand for a moment. Oh. Well, if you want to knock it on the head, mate. No, no, I'm all good. I'm just literally sure? standing and stretching. Yeah. So aging things are a bit of a bugger. Yep. Ah, there we are. Back to it. Seventy-three, sixty-five. Fifty-six, sixty-six. I'm just trying to work out what part's what. Because, yeah, I don't want to have to paint things white twice. Mm. Uh, but I don't want to have to do things like, uh, you know, actuators for air brakes that are going to be closed anyway and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So, part 66. Oh, yes, I need to be white. Oh, no, it's fine silver, it's saying. Let's see. Um, that looks like the... Looks like the lock strut on the undercarriage. It says fine silver, but whether that's the whole thing, I don't know. Which bit's that? Uh, diagonal going forward, upwards from the main wheel. Okay, page number? Uh, page number seven, down the bottom. Oh, what, that one? This one here. Yes. Yeah. No, it's not fine silver, it's white. It's white. I would have thought it'd be white. So that's 66, that one. Cool.
Is that a bird? Yep. It's a pigeon. Delicious. We had the noisy bastards around there. Oh no, we had a, like a like a brace of kookaburras earlier, but you know they tend to be at sunset when it's um, you don't hear them at night. But when they get a, like a gaggle of them together and it's about six or so just all singing together, it's quite loud. It's a bit like pissed teenagers hanging around your door. Well, none of my kids drink that heavily. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. <laughs> Not yet. No, they're all good. Great kids. Well, you've got to say that, haven't you? Oh, no. well, I'm pretty lucky. Come on, you lot of reprobates. Join in with us. Tell us what you're up to. Being nosy. What's your next video of Sprue and Gloat? Bugger. I hope not. You get locked up for that. No. I did read an article once saying that if you haven't tried all facets of love, then you haven't known love. And I thought, you just can't tell me to go out and look for, a, like, a poodle. Why not? Again, you get locked up for that. <laughs> God. I think it's Barbie. I think it's a Rapunzel. Uh, what do I call it? It's one of the fairy tale ones. But I know the songs because I bought these videos for the kids when they were about three, five, that sort of age. And they're still playing them now. And they're about 20, 23, 25. <laughs> yeah. Give us a sec. Uh, Mark Broadwith says, uh, designing a loaded mechanism. Sorry, a loading mechanism. Ooh, what for, Mark? What for? Because Mark's the one who's got the uh, 3D printed bit shop. Ah, suddenly my best mate too. Now I've got nothing I need printed. <laughs> yeah, I sent him some stuff. Did you ever hear of the Type W loader, the Wendy? No. Okay, look it up. I've got all the drawings and blueprints for it, so... I've sent him those so he can do a Wendy because I believe Good he does an S type and a Y loader and a few other bits and pieces. So, Wendy loader. Is that a bird? Is that honestly a bird? No, that's a drill. Okay, you're going to say. Okay, well, that's interesting. No, I have not seen one of those. Have a look on you on uh, Tinterweb. You'll see pictures of them. Well, that's a, uh, I guess it's a 3D printed one or something or other, but that looks, print model, it looks really cool, like useful. Oh, they are. They're great fun as well. Oh, you can uh, throw them in circles? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one day, the uh, Squadron Wobbly, one officer, uh, pulled in the Chief Armourer. And he says, look, Chief, I know it's one of the best ways for your boys to get around, but you're going to have to stop them uh, riding the Wendy. Mm. And the Chief starts laughing. And he says, oh, come on, Chief, what what the hell is so funny? And he said, look behind you, sir. So the Wobbly does no more than look behind him and goes, oh, sod it, forget it, Chief. And out the window, there's a guy called John Longstaff driving a Wendy. 
and then you've got the Django sack up, the junior engineering officer sat on the back with him, <laughs> laughing the heads off. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was, yeah, I, well, I was with Herx, but I went up to one of the other bases where we had C-17s and uh, visiting an old mate who was the Wobbly there, as you call him. Wobbly Orange. Oh, wobbly. give me a sec. You... Before you crack on, I've got a couple of comments. Uh, Mark says, uh, decommissioning, decommissioning oil wells. Ooh, oh, interesting. Geez. That's 30 quid, is that one? What is 30 quid? The Wendy? Uh, I'm going to take a shower. See you later. See you later, Dominic. Yeah, Bye. Dominic. Yeah, Mark, what's 30 quid? Let us know. Ooh, maybe the picture I pulled up? I don't know. So, Might yeah, you were saying sense. you've gone to see a mate as a wobbly orange. Yeah, and I said, oh, yeah, seem upset. What's going on? He said, oh, I need to, you know, pull this guy in. He said, don't no, stick around. I said, I'll leave. Nah, stick around. So, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And he went off. You're driving the... Um, cherry picker around like an idiot you need to slow down he said no 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 and i was all good and he just hit play on the video and showed him doing donuts on the floor of the hangar that had just been painted um <laughs> and leaving all this like tire marks every year yeah, that was me <laughs> he said okay get get out of my office sort of thing and i just oh i just i had trouble stopping laughing the entire time though and he was saying never get promoted well that wasn't wasn't hard for me. <laughs> yeah, the long service and good conduct medal. Yeah, no such thing. Yeah, what's it? See, ours are different. Ours is literally, um, you know, fifteen years. Oh, it so didn't get court medal. No, we don't have an undetected crime or whatever. We we the good conduct isn't part of our honor system, so. You can be charged for whatever. If you serve 15 years, you're eligible. Oh, that's the what they call the LSGCM. LSGCM? Long, ser uh, like Long service uh, and good conduct medal. Yeah, <clears throat> no. But it's what we called the don't get caught medal. Sorry, no, didn't we, get caught medal. Yeah, we call it the, um, the Parramatta Gong. Um, the colours of the ribbon are the same colour of the Parramatta rugby team. All right. And that's so it's 15 years. And we have another one called, um, what's well, the ADM, the Australian Defence Medal. So you do basically your period of minimum enlistment. You know, you do your basic course. Mm. Um, and we call that the Marylands Medal. Because Marylands is a suburb next to Parramatta. So it's close to Parramatta, but nowhere near close enough. Uh Well, I'm not going to be paying these. Oh, no, I will. There's a couple of sinkholes, but uh, no, it's not. It's where, the, no, it's where the struts go. So, no, that's fine. I will paint them. What have we got? 15 minutes left? I'll get no. some actual modelling done. As long as you want. If you want to go on a bit longer, you're more than welcome to. I don't mind. I've got nothing to do till 2. I've got to go and pick my drugs up. I got my drugs earlier. I'm good for another month. Yeah, I've got to go and get mine. I've got enough to last me all tonight. Mm. Cool. Mark says, uh, I, the Wendy. So it's going to be 30 quid. What scale are you going to be doing them in? So I'll definitely be looking at one for 172nd and 148th. We've got um, we've got all our what we call RAF furnished support equipment, GSE as we call it. You call it GSE yeah. there or something else, right? Yeah, RAF support equipment, GSE. Yeah, 
Um, the Americans called something else. Um, that escapes me. Uh, anyway, yeah, so we've got all the stuff that we've always had. Um, again, different aircraft platforms and everything else, but we have standardized equipment. All the stuff, like when we bought the F-35, we get a whole lot of stuff that we didn't, regardless whether you want it or not, it's you get it, and they call it a part of the program. And a lot of it's just really substandard crap, you know? You yeah. just wonder why the Americans, whoever signed off on that. So yeah. they're um, Eagles. So we have Clarkters, so the Toyota, um, basically, tow motors. Um, the American ones are Eagles. They're designed to be square and modular in that you can stack them on board a... Um, an aircraft carrier and yeah. strap them all down, and they are awesome. crap. So if we have Clarkers, no one will ever take an Eagle. Just, just shit. <laughs> yeah, we had lots of stackable stuff that worked. Yeah, oh, they work, but you'll you'll just not take it. You'll take the Australian one just because if nothing else has got two seats. So instead of just driving yourself, you can give your buddy a lift down the down the. Yeah. Okay. So again, showing people how not to how to not prime and just paint things white. This will be a lesson. Oh. Got mail. at me being industrious <laughs> if this is too loud let me know i'll mute myself no it's fine Got anything planned for the weekend? I mentioned that earlier, talking about doing something. Oh, with, that's right. Uh, with Ron. But um, no, nothing final yet. And I really should come up with. If I don't do anything, she'll brood. She'll just, you know. I'd love a hint. You should talk to her offline and get a hint from her. <laughs> Otherwise, she'll end up with an Apple Watch. So here's the thing. So I've got an Apple Watch, and I didn't even buy it. This was a gift from my brother. Um because he bought the new one. Uh, and this replaced an Aldi one, a $50 one. Um, it was pretty ordinary because it didn't do much. What this does is integrate very well with my phone because it just happens to be an Apple. Um, and because the usefulness has gone up, or 70%, I'd say, I keep saying to Bron, you need an Apple Watch. And, oh, no, I don't need one. But I just want to buy her one because I see its value. Like the, the ability to, like if, if I'm in the car, I just hold this up, press a button and just say, play, whatever, and it'll just do that. Whereas, you know, if you talk to Siri in the car, it'll play something totally wrong. <laughs> So, no, it's, it's a useful gift. It's not just something that, you know, I, I find, like, yeah, again, if you're a Samsung guy, an Android thing, you do you. I'm not yep. judging. But I see it's worth its value. Yeah, 
Yeah. So I'll use SMS Paints most of the time uh, because it's our local brand. It's available. They've got yeah. a great range and it's pre thinned and everything else. Like it's got everything going for it. Um, like I like everything about them. And yeah, they just happen to be, I think, world class. So if you know if you can find them in the UK or wherever you are, try them. I don't think you'll be disappointed. But again, if you use any other brand, use what makes you happy. And yep. I, you won't be disappointed. And I haven't spoken to. Uh, Scott Taylor, who's the boss of it. Oh, I actually have. I've met him at our local hobby store a couple of years ago. I was talking to him about airbrush problems that I had, basically. He was great help. But uh, the problem was I had a crap airbrush. <laughs> so I bought a new one. I haven't looked back since. But um, he's a really good guy. And I had a message from um, James Skiffins a few months ago now, just before the 48 and 48. And he said, oh, I've just been talking offline to Scott Taylor and he's very interested in what you're doing with, um, you know, the Models for Heroes equivalent in Australia and everything else. Yeah. But I haven't got a hold of him to ask for anything because I want, don't want to do that without having someone to show for it first. But, you know, he's, yeah, he's very well respected in the modelling circles in Australia. He's active on forums and helps wherever he can. If you, if you need a paint, he'll mix it for you. But yeah, nice. I'll need to get hold of him. Hmm. Oh, no. somewhat satisfying just painting a whole row of stuff yeah and just going plonk <laughs> moving on to the next one i feel like i'm um doing stuff it's always a bonus yeah but now I, I, I felt miserable the last couple of days i haven't felt like doing this um now i've got i've got the mojo thank you steph you're welcome I'm just flipping between different bits and pieces while the paint's drying on the tub. So I'm doing the wings and the tail, get them glued and sorted and ready. So what's that? Oh yeah. See, the watch just took, gave me a message. Useful. Mm -hmm. It said, shut up, you twat. Watching any series that I should look into lately, Steph? Uh, not a lot, no. Started a new one on Apple TV called Silo. It's basically, um, what do they call it, a computer game? Yeah, <sighs> I've seen it advertised. I can't remember the name of it. Any good? Fallout. Yeah, it's Fallout in a series. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying it, yes. Um, you know, it's one of those shows where you think, what's going on? Like, you know, you're waiting to see what happens next. But no, I'm not avoiding it. Where are my two fuselage halves? Where do I put them? Huh. Oh, 
this helps as well. Oh, what's that? It's a plan of a tornado. Right. Made by the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not joking. No, yeah, I know you're not joking. <laughs> not the first time. I do remember reading a book about the Concorde many years ago. And um, Tupolev was given a tour of one of the factories when they're making the Concorde. And he just, without you know, any warning at all, ripped out a tape measure and went chung, 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 and turned to one of the engineers and said, like, this is about four millimetres longer or shorter or whatever than, than the plans. Um, why have you made that change? And everyone's looking around at each other just going, uh, um, um, yeah. Okay. Still looking for my fuselage nose halves. I know they're not far away. Clearly, they don't want to be painted white. Hmm. Oh. oh, crap. <laughs> I just what? looked under my desk and found a, you know, when you, there's a bit you're missing. This one, I didn't even know it was missing. It's a 48 scale HK Lancaster wing. What I didn't even know it was on the floor. I just never looked. Okay. That'll go back. Well, that would have been fun if you'd have stood in it. Or if I uh, built the kit and go, where? I can't find it. Yeah, everyone will notice it's missing. Oh, I found those fuselage halves. For? I was missing the nose halves. Oh, right. They're literally in front of me. They've been there the entire time. Oh, and I've already painted them. So what am I worried about? It's all good. Carry on. Yeah, you just reminded me of something. I'm an idiot. Cool. Yep, a build that I've got to do. Once I've finished the King Tiger, so just after yeah, me. and it is. You ready for this one? Sure am. Oh, thirty second scale on G four. That's that's Z Zikamori, yeah. Yep. Nice kit. Oh, it is, and I'll show you something as well. Mm. There you go. Top cam. You also get the uh, Eric Hartman figure as well. Oh, nice. That's it, that one. Not that one. Where the hell are you? Right, well, I'm showing you. There you go. That's the wings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I've had a look through the, the Mustang kit of theirs. It's beautiful. Oh, it's absolutely pig and outstanding. Just, here we go. Look at this bugger. You see that? Uh, which bit? Oh, yeah. That bit there. They? Let me just flip it over. Oh, look. All the pistons. Seriously. Seriously. Wow. Thinking so, that is worth... Just opening the top up and opening all the pistons up just to show it off. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's just a mad kit. Mad, mad, mad. <sighs> and it's one of those where your fingers are itching to do it. There we are. No, there would be. Oh, the chair is creaking a bit today. Yeah, Mark's tittering away at that. <sighs> yes, Mr. Broadwith, you didn't respond to my previous comment. I asked, what scale are you doing the Wendy's in? What I might do for this is uh, see what we've got as aftermarket stuff. Mm -hmm. Even the instructions are stunning. Hang on. Oh, wow. But it shows your pictures. Oh, give me some. <laughs> How many pieces are in the engine alone? Well, that's the engine. And it gives you pictures of what it looks like at the end. Oh, wow. Gives you all the Vallejo colours as well, which I've, I've got all the colours now. So, yeah, it's just, oh my God, I, I, it's like you've got the bloody pistons in there. And I'm like, I need to work away, find a way of showing this off. So when you get around to that, are you going to do that on your channel? Yes. Can't wait for that. That'll be, I'll be certainly watching. So, yeah, that'll probably be September, October time to start that. Oh, which year? Next year. Uh, sounds awesome. So yeah, so you'll you'll finish the um, the the Hetzer before that one, and the um, Tiger. Yeah, I need to get lots of stuff finished before I start anything else now. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Mark says, you have to finish this baby Tonka first. I know, mate. Mm -hmm. um, I am prolific at starting but not finishing. Um, what scale would you like? The 135th? Uh, the 172nd and 148th. Uh, yeah. But... Um, if you let me know when it's ready, there is an RA Farmers modeling group that I I run. Oh. And I will uh, chuck it in there and ask the guys what scale they would like. Um, also, if you speak to Nigel Ship, who runs the IPMS Tonka group, um, lots of people will be interested in that as well from there. Mark also goes on to say, 
Uh, you'll have to cut away part of the engine block, then paint the edge red like in museums. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Either that or just hack and bash at it and uh, make a load of parts and have the engine out on a table with the uh, engineers working on it. Okay. VAP sixty. What's that, Mark? What's a VAP sixty? Not sure on that one. Hmm. Um, just because I can, I'll show the viewers what else um, other projects I've got going on in the background. I've got three. Long term one is just this one. Give me a sec. Sure. Where are we? Uh, there we go. All yours. So yeah, long term is this one. This is the HMS or the HM Brig Supply from the Australia's First Fleet. So this is a Calder Craft Kit 164 scale. Um, and I've been working on it for well, about five years, I guess. Um, and it's coming up the home stretch. In fact, as you could sort of see, ugh, really airbrush stuff in the way. Yeah, it's it's looking just about complete in the the hull. What I've been waiting for is um, at the base of each mast. Ugh, you've got a series of cleats around there. You see the gaps? There's not meant to be gaps. There wasn't enough cleats in the in the kit. That's now been sorted. They're in the mail to me, and I couldn't progress. I couldn't. Put, I couldn't steep the masts or put in the bowsprit because it's got cleats as well. So they're going to be here probably Monday. I'll be able to progress with that finally. I've literally been waiting for about six months for these cleats to arrive. Um, the service by the company that built the kit is terrible. Second one I'm working on is. Uh, I won't bring the box in. But it's the, oh, here we go, 48 scale Airfix English Electric Lightning. I'm doing the, oh, the F6 version. Um, so where we are with that, I've, uh, it's all together. It's painted silver underside, all taped up. And what I've done today is just paint the dark sea grey. And tomorrow I'll most likely do the, um, the dark green. So that's coming along. Happy with that. Very nice kit. And the third one is, uh, again, it's a slow burn. I've been working on this one as a um, Renault RE 30B turbo, uh, alarm prost. So I've been working on this one. Wasn't happy with the yellow colour, but as you see, it's sort of coming together. It's looking like every other <laughs> Damien Formula 1 car um, with all its greedies inside and all that sort of stuff. Spotless Thanks because they all... Mate. Thank you. But, yeah, a couple of things to go. Mainly decal, put the wheels on, and it's about done. Um, paint the figure. Um, last time I built this one, it uh, was in the 80s when it was new each. And uh, I remember it was moulded in yellow, so I didn't paint the yellow. And the white was a matte white. It just brushed on. It was terrible. So um, this is my penance. is actually doing it properly this time. <laughs> so they're my three projects on the side. Why the hell not? Hmm. Why the hell not? So I've got some more comments from Mark. Let's just pop you back down again. Uh, he says, Google it. John, no, it's Steph. John's the one with a funny accent. Mm -hmm. I have no accent. Yeah, Mark says, I've already done the S-type S in a while later. Yep, I've seen those. Uh, that v VAP60. Yeah, it's just a, a modern version of the Wendy. Uh, John, have you kept the panel silver under the wings on the F6? Um, all the silver is currently taped up, so just the leading edges as per the instructions. Cool. On the fuselage. Look at that. So yeah, that's looking good, John. Yeah. 
What I've found is it's backwards. Um, this is left, this is right. This is not flip side of the top view. Um, this is on the wrong side. So if you turn that over, it doesn't match. But yeah, fix that because I'm a modeler. But as I say, it's looking a bit ordinary at the moment. You know what it's like until you get the all the paint on. It's um, but yeah, I'm very happy with it. Everything goes together rather well. It's like I, I love Airfix, a fanboy, and I've heard it's a good kit. I am not disappointed. Cool. And I hope they re-release it soon. Well, that's. Two and a quarter hours, Steph. If you don't mind, I'd like to cut it away here. Yep, not a problem. I was just about to say that. If you want to knock it on the head, we can do that. Yeah, no, that'd be good. This is this has been great. I've, I've made good progress today. I'm very happy with this. So basically, as, as you probably saw, everything that's got to be white has been painted white. Um, it's it's dry already because of the the lacquer. But I'm not going to continue with it yet. But basically, I could throw together all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, so next time we do this, it'll look more like a tornado. Cool. Hmm. Well, I've got a tub sprayed up. And the start of this lot. So seats, cockpit stuff. So that seems to match quite nicely. So that is just grey primer. That goes grey primer. So I'm going to leave that like that and use that as my colour. And then start to uh, paint up what I need to paint up. Mm. So that should hopefully be the tub finished and ready for when you see us next week on Tuesday again. Yep. You still up for Tuesday? Absolutely. Excellent. That's what I like to hear. So, give me a second. I just need to... Ooh. Ow. What have you done? Oh, I just kicked the bin and all the empty beer cans just made a rattle. Uh, <laughs> at least it wasn't the bucket. <sighs> No. Yeah, don't want you doing that on the show. So, Mark, your latest comment there. Give me a sec. Uh, it says, Steph, tell John there is a panel on the fuse under the wing kept silver. So I've got them there. They're, they're painted chrome already, and uh, they're covered over with tape on both sides. So There you go, Mark. Thank you. He's already on the ball. Thank you very much, though, for that info. It's really helpful. Very. Because oh. I, I, I haven't been around them much, so any help yeah. is useful. Yep. Yeah. So you've brought us up to date on what you've finished off, John, have you? I have. Thank you very much. Cool. No problem. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, so if you'd like to say your batty tie, John. Been a pleasure. Thanks for bearing with me, Steph, and uh, all viewers now and in the future. Yep. So, oh, Mark says uh, I used to work on them at Wharton. Ah, nice. Nice playing. I love them. Yeah. So, buddy tie. Remember, folks, stay safe, keep modelling, and see you next Tuesday. <laughs> I'll be here. Which way am I putting? No way. Yeah, I got it. I know. Oh, Grow up, yeah. Steph. No, never. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've never seen it, jump on Sunday morning, Models Heroes, 9am for our modelling Sunday service. Bye. See ya. <laughs>